Hey guys, this is Rick Kelly from Parkour Visions. I'm the head coach here, and I'm here today to talk about barefoot training and parkour. The idea behind barefoot training is pretty simple. The human foot has been around for about 2 million years in its current configuration, but we've only had shoes for about 30,000 years, and for most of that 30,000 years, they just kept us warm. There was no structure, there was no heel, there was nothing that changed our biomechanics or supported our foot. So basically, evolution has designed our foot to operate shoeless. So when you put uh, a heavy shoe on with a lot of structure, it's basically like putting a cast on your uh, on your arm. And what happens when you're wearing something, uh, wearing a cast on something is it atrophies. So over time, if we're habitually in shoes, what you're gonna see is that the connective tissues, the muscles, the bone, um, it's all gonna atrophy. And at the same time, the sensitivity of the foot, the flexibility and the mobility are all gonna be lost. So it really changes the, the basic physical foundation of our body, which is our feet. It takes a long time transition to training barefoot because you have to think of your foot like someone who's been completely sedentary. It's completely untrained. So it's gonna take a long time to rebuild the bone structure, to rebuild the connective tissue structure. Because people say, um, you know, it takes six weeks to see any sort of adaption in the connective tissues. So if you go out tomorrow and you're like, I'm gonna train just like I trained with shoes on, barefoot, you're gonna break your feet. <laughs> mm. You have to. Think of this as something that's literally going to take years to completely transition towards having the strength to, to train as much as possible barefoot. To start the transition, what you want to do is you want to be barefoot as much of the time as possible. A lot of people wear shoes when they don't need to wear shoes. If you're walking around in your house, be barefoot. If you live uh, or if you work at a place that is amenable to it, be barefoot or wear a shoe that's really minimalist while you're walking around at work. Um, once you get sort of comfortable with that, um, you can start incorporating barefoot training into your into your warm up, right? If you're not, you don't start your training by doing 14 foot wall passes and big drops. You start your training with calisthenics and raw light running, and all that stuff can be done barefoot. And you can start getting your foot to adapt to training through that warm up period. Once you've gotten to the point where you can train uh, barefoot in your warm up. You know, six to nine weeks, once, uh, once you become comfortable with that, for six to nine weeks, then you can start incorporating uh, barefoot training into the bigger movements that you do. Vaults, drops, and wall passes, and tic tacs. Um, and you can start looking for a minimalist shoe to be your primary training shoe. A shoe that has basically a nice wide toe box, a flat sole that's equal from front to back. Um, that's gonna be the type of shoe that you want. You have to think of shoes like tools, or they're performance enhancing equipment. Um, if you wanna do the biggest jump to a nice hard surface, a shoe with some padding is gonna help. Sometimes if you're training on stuff that's slick and bare feet, a shoe like a Vibram that has some rubber underneath it is gonna be helpful. So it can definitely help you perform better to wear shoes, but in the long run, training as much as possible in a sort of barefoot way is gonna make you a stronger, better athlete. What we're looking for in a minimal shoe and a shoe that doesn't mess up our biomechanics is we want a shoe that doesn't have an elevated heel. So an elevated heel is going to change your biomechanics a lot. So we want a shoe that has a, it's the same height front to back. We want it to be super flexible. Um, we want it to be grippy obviously for parkour. And we want it to have a nice wide toe box so that your toes aren't scrunched together so they can exercise full mobility and move around properly. Yeah, one of the things we hear a lot from people is, you know, the best guys are wearing these shoes and they're doing these huge drops and these things and I want to be able to do that. Well, your body can't, is capable of being stronger if it's built off of a barefoot foundation. And the fact that there are some people who have built themselves up on top of it just reflects the fact that most people train in bad shoes right now. So there's a much bigger talent pool of people who are training in KOs and K-Swisses than there are people who are training in minimal shoes right now. Um, and yeah, at, if you want to take a huge drop, if you're not going to feel it in your feet as much in a big fat shoe, but in the long run, you are going to feel it in your knees and your body's going to break down. And a lot of those guys are in a lot of pain from that. Jeez. Your foot it has more mechanoreceptors, which are nerves that, uh, that that tell you what's going on, that tell you what's happening in your foot, than any other part of your body. It's designed to, to be a sensory unit that hits the ground and tells you what's going on. When you put a shoe on, it's like a blindfold that you're putting on your foot. And so when you take off shoes, you find that you have tremendously more sensitivity and you can develop a lot better ability to really interpret what's going on with the ground. So you're less likely to sprain your ankle. You can land precisions better. You can do all sorts of things better by being barefoot.